Welcome to Victory Church Craddock. Right, so I will be sharing some good news with you tonight. Okay, yay, good news is good. Right. Okay, so remember the ocean. So how would you feel if you were not able to swim and you found yourself in a rip current being taken out into deep waters and you realize that you are drowning and suddenly you are saved. You find yourself on the shore and someone has put a warm blanket around you. How would you feel? I'm sure that would make you happy. Right, so let's go a bit further. How would you feel if the one that was standing next to you said to you, you never have to fear drowning again because he will never leave you or forsake you and that he will be with you for every single day of the rest of your life? The problem with humans is we learn to swim and we become so secure in our own abilities and our strengths and our smarts, our successes, that we forget that we need a savior. We forget that every good and perfect gift comes from God and that is in James 1 verse 17, not preacher James. (laughs) The disconnect happens when we do not realize the depth of our sin. The sin that we have in our life is like an ocean. No matter how well you can swim, eventually, if you are the one that's dropped in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, eventually you're gonna need a savior. We might think that we are good people, we are law abiding, we serve our families well, we work well, we come to church, we serve in church, so we tick our little boxes because we measure ourselves against the standards of the world. Okay, Jody, click. Okay. But if you had to measure yourself against the goodness of God and God's standards, how would you measure up? So in Matthew 5 and the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus actually takes the law and he puts it on a whole other level. Like what William said this morning, Jesus, without Jesus, with Jesus. <laughs> and it's the same when you look at Matthew 5. So Jesus takes the law, which is good, by the way, because we need the law, because the law makes us aware that we actually need a savior. So he takes the law and he shows us what kingdom quality looks like, how kingdom people can operate within a worldly system. Have any of you heard of Ray Comfort? He's got a Facebook page. He's brilliant. He actually speaks to people on the street, which is, I think, what we should be doing more of. (laughs) But he compares living life without salvation and without God, like standing on the edge of a plane. How many of you have skydived before? Glenn? Okay, you get a gevoel, me. So imagine when you're standing on the edge of the plane and the door goes open and you jump out without a parachute and you trust in your ability to flap your arms to get you to safety, okay? So even if you didn't know it when you were on the plane, After you jumped out, you will realize you need a savior. The good news is that we do have a savior, and he is relentless in his pursuit of us. In Revelation 3.20, he says that he stands at the door and he knocks. In Psalm 23, he says, surely your goodness and your mercy will pursue me all the days of my life. In Romans 8.34, he says he stands in the gap and he pleads for us with the Father. In 1 John 2 verse 1, he says that he is our advocate. Now here is one of my all-time favorite scriptures. Can you let on the S? I can't. Okay, but I can't even describe it. This is Hebrews 7 verse 25. Therefore, he is able once and forever to save those who come to God through him. And he lives, listen to this guys, to intercede with God on their behalf. That's what he does. He's in heaven interceding for you. Jesus is the perfect sacrifice. He's the perfect mediator, advocator, intercessor, comforter, and savior. But he's not just that. He's also the lion of Judah who will fiercely defend you and come to your rescue. But this is when you are in Christ. In Christ, you are covered on all sides. The best news is this. All you have to do is turn your focus away from your own abilities and onto Jesus. You need to make an informed decision and use the free will that God has given you and trust in the finished work of the cross. So this next slide, I want you to read out loud with me. 
Okay, you ready? Salvation doesn't come from being perfect. Salvation comes from believing in the perfect one. And this is good news. Sometimes the good news doesn't feel like good news, and sometimes the good news doesn't be, uh, sound like good news because it, in, it confronts, convicts us, it makes us uncomfortable as it urges us out of our sin, makes us aware of our sin and gets us out of our comfort zones. It challenges our behavior and our old ways of thinking. It might even sound harsh at sometimes because the truth highlights our shortcomings because what the truth does, it puts a mirror in our face. By our nature, we do not like to submit. We prefer our own way and trust in our own understanding. You can ask Marinas how easily I submit. <laughs> I'm still a work in progress. <laughs> but we trust in our own life experiences above what the Word of God says. But God corrects those whom He loves. But what is important to understand that this correction is not judgment. This correction is realignment. And God alignment puts us back into the will of God. And in the will of God, we are safe. So his will is counterculture, and his will is counter human nature. Like when William always says, his kingdom is the right side up. Kingdom culture is forgiveness instead of bitterness, grace and mercy instead of judgment and condemnation, love versus hate. Um, there's a massive difference between truth and fact. Anyone who has been on a diet would know that facts change. Because one season they will say, eat avocados, it's really good for you. And then they realize, oh, there's a lot of fat and you shouldn't be eating avocados. Then they'll tell you, running. Running is going to make you lose weight. And then they discover, oh, it's actually bad for your joints, so you shouldn't be running. So facts change as information comes in. But truth cannot change. And God is truth. And the Bible is truth. His word is infallible. Ooh, I can in that's I. Right. The fact is that you are a sinner. But the truth is, Jesus is a savior. The fact is that you are lost without salvation. But the truth is that he would leave the 99 for the one. The fact is that you might be addicted to prescription drugs, or porn, or gambling, or online gaming, or social media. The truth is that in Christ you are a new creation, and the old has passed and the new has come, and God remembers your sin no more. The fact is that you might even be in a place where you hate your life so much at this stage that you are considering giving up, because you just want to get rid of the pain and the disappointment. But the truth is, when you are in Christ, you have the mind of Christ and you can take these thoughts captive and you can submit these thoughts to the word of God. The fact is that your sin is great, like the ocean. But the truth is, where sin abounds, grace superabounds, and God's love covers a multitude of sins. The fact is that you might be an outcast, but in Matthew 9, Jesus says that he has come to invite the outcasts of society and the ones who are sinners. So you are not saved based on your works. You are not saved based on your ability to swim and keep on swimming. Thank God you are not saved based on your ability to flap your arms after jumping out of a plane. You are saved based on believing in the perfect Savior who before the foundations of the earth knew you by name. And all you need to do is quit swimming. <coughs> Call out to Jesus that he is your life buoy. It's a life buoy that God has sent and thrown into your ocean of sin. So all you need to do is grab it. The goodness of God leads people to repentance. And the gift of salvation is an invitation into the kingdom. And we can access the kingdom while we are still on earth. Because otherwise, what would the point be? In Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, Jesus says, Are you weary, carrying a heavy burden? Then come to me, and I will refresh your life, for I am an oasis. So simply join your life with mine. Learn my ways and discover that I am gentle and humble 
and easy to please. You will find refreshment and rest in me, for all I require of you is pleasant and easy. Does that not sound 100% different than worldly systems? Rest and kindness and peace and joy and just rest in me is 100% different to what we're used to. Before I read this story, James, I'm going to drink some water. <laughs> mm. Okay, so this story, I heard this story in a sermon. It made me cry um, because it just reflects the heart of the Father so beautifully. And I hope that as I share the story with you that, that that is what it will do for you, that sometimes we need a different story to show us the heart of God because we get so used to hearing the story of that Jesus came and that God gave his son and we get so used to it. It's, I want to almost call it Christianese. And sometimes we forget how big a sacrifice it was. So in the aftermath of World War II, there were many children that were orphaned. And the problem in Europe was actually so big that the European government had to step in and fund orphanages, because that's how big the problem was. So one day, the head of an orphanage heard a knock at the door. He opened the door and found a man standing there with his little girl. And he proceeded to ask the man, what he could do. So the man said, please, can you take care of this girl? I cannot look after her anymore. The head of the orphanage was so moved with compassion at this sight that he asked the man, are you this girl's father? To which he replied, yes. Well, sir, it breaks my heart to tell you this, but we are not allowed by law to take any children if there is one parent still alive. So after some thought, the father's eyes welled up with tears as he, looked, as he looked at his precious daughter. He kneeled and held her tightly and whispered that he loved her more than she would ever know. He said in a gentle voice to her that he has to leave now, but they would soon meet each other again. He got up and turned to the head of the orphanage and placed the hand of his daughter into the hand of the man in front of him and said, look after her well. I will make the necessary arrangements. So this story is the very heart of God. This story is sacrificial love. And he loved us first. I often say that God bankrupted heaven so that we can be saved because that is your value. You are so valuable to the king that he would bankrupt everything he had. He would give his best for you. So God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him will not perish but will have eternal life. Many of us stop at this verse and we don't read the one that comes right after which says that God did not send his son into the world to condemn it but he sent his son so that he could save the world through it. So William has been teaching us so beautifully the last few weeks. Knowing about God is meaningless. But knowing God is meaningful. You have an original handcrafted kingdom purpose. So don't be like the 11 disciples who had to sit in the boat and watch Peter walk on water. Get out of your boat of self-reliance and turn your eyes to Jesus. Because he is your parachute. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He is your life buoy. Okay, that's your life buoy. Right, so... If you have your Bibles, I would like you to please turn to 1 Peter um, 4 verse 5. It is up on the screen as well. So sometimes we hear something and it just goes in and out. But it's different when you actually read it out loud because then it sort of settles in your spirit. And I want to tell you that salvation is not fragile. There's not much you can do to make God leave you because he says, like he said to the person drowning, I will never leave you nor forsake you. You never have to worry about drowning again. So read along with me. Read out loud. 1 Peter 1 verse 4. We are reborn into perfect inheritance that can never perish, never be defiled, and never diminish. It is promised and preserved in the heavenly realm for you. Hebrews 10:14 says, "And by his one sacrifice, 
He makes us perfectly holy and complete for all time. Your salvation is not fragile. So, in conclusion, before we go home tonight, be sure where you stand with God. Be 100% absolutely rock solid sure where you stand with God. So I'm going to read a few statements, and if any of these statements resonate with you, I'm going to read a scripture, and then I will ask you to stand, uh, that we can pray for you and with you. So for all the believers, this is your cue to start praying, because God says that we partner with him. So I'm going to read the scriptures to you, uh, this, these statements to you, and then I'll end with a scripture. So if you have followed Jesus Christ, but life has happened, and tonight you find yourself distant and disconnected, I will ask that you stand at the end of this. If you have never fully surrendered your life to Christ before, and you feel your heart beating faster and your tummy turning because the Holy Spirit is awakening in you, I'm going to ask you to stand. Salvation is a step of faith. It is faith in what God promised. It is faith that God is faithful. Each person must repent and be born again. And James and William so beautifully explained this morning that repentance is not a bad thing. Repentance, I think in, in many years, repentance has been taught like repent or burn. And that's not what God means. Repentance is a good thing. It's a continual thing that has to keep on happening every time Holy Spirit shows you something that's between you and God, something that's blocking you. Repentance is changing the way you think about it, changing your mind about what you think it is, what it looks like to serve God. So that's what I'm asking you to do. If the Holy Spirit, he's a still small voice, if there's something that's resonating in your heart, something that you know is between you and God, like Jeannie has said this, this afternoon as well, Submit that to it. Submit to it. Give yourself to the Lordship of Christ. And remember that God says, whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord. There's no conditions to that. Whosoever. As the song said, he loves us where he finds us. You don't have to be perfect to get this. So when we do this, it does not mean that you have to have everything figured out. All this means is you are taking a step towards God. And then sanctification process happens, and then family happens, and we help each other, and we connect, and we grow. But you don't have to understand everything or have everything figured out right from the beginning, because none of us that are sitting here that have been saved for many years had everything figured out when we gave our life to Christ. It's just a reaction to your Holy Spirit connecting to God, because we were created by God and for God. So as I read the scripture, this is in Romans 10, verse 9 to 13. For if you publicly declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will experience salvation. For the heart that believes and receives this gift of righteousness of God and with the mouth that gives thanks to salvation, for the scripture encourage us, encourages us with these words, everyone who believes in him will never be disappointed. And that's my prayer for you tonight that when you believe in him, when you actually take that step of faith, that you will never be disappointed. So as we stand, stand. <laughs> so if any of those scriptures, anything that I read this tonight has actually resonated with your heart, it's, just, it's between you and God. You don't have to tell anyone next to you because God knows in any way. But may you go home tonight and take a step forward, a step in the right direction, a step into a place where you will never be disappointed because God is good and he is faithful even though we are not faithful. And I pray the scripture over you tonight, 1 Philippians verse 6. I pray with great faith because I am fully convinced that the one who began this glorious work in you will faithfully continue the process of maturing you and putting his finishing touches on it until the revealing of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. If there's anybody here who would like to respond.